Well, it's cold and windy today. Oh. Just warming the car up for a second. Come on, summer. I'm assuming this is recording. If not, I'm just talking to myself. Um, there's a white screen on my camera. Uh, sometimes the, the, the display screen works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why. Uh, we'll give it a try. I think it's recording. Um, blowy snowy day. Saturday we had a pretty bad storm early in the year for us. Um, snowed a little bit last night. It's uh, Wednesday now, the 27th of November, 2013. I brought a thermos full of coffee with me today because I don't feel like stopping at Tim's. It's always so busy this time of day. So I got some. I got a can of the Tim Hortons coffee. It's cheaper too. Make a pot at home and Legal to turn. 
jerking for years. I'm not stupid. Although sometimes I think she thinks I'm stupid. But, you know, her marks are still okay, so, you know, what are you going to expect, right? I did it when I was that age. And so you have to, you just have to accept it, really. And hope that it doesn't get out of control. But now I know what my parents felt like, too, how they... Uh, yeah, I, I was going to make a video of the house, but I didn't want to uh, embarrass her. It was weird, though, because I had uh, been watching the news the night before. I was going to take her Monday if uh, the snow was bad, because Saturday was really um, pretty nasty. I was watching the CHCH news, and... It seemed worse out there than we had in the north part of Toronto, but uh, when I got out there, there was nothing. There was less than we had. It was also 4 or 5 degrees Celsius warmer, I guess being on the south side of Lake Ontario. But yeah, there was nothing. So I stayed about half an hour. There was still nobody home. Uh, she took me to the St. Catharines. Well, I guess it's actually in a. It's not really in St. Catharines. It's in the. It's in the sticks around St. Catharines. I think the town is called Lincoln. Uh, the Humane Society, because they have cats on for adoption for twenty-five dollars. I guess you could say. Construction zone. Well, that is so rare. Last month, a uh, 48-year-old guy was, or maybe it was September, in this area. He was riding a bicycle down here, and he was hit by a car and killed, so I think they're going to widen these lanes and uh, probably reduce the speed limit. Interesting thing happened in the worst spot of all, in the fast lane going over the Burlington Skyway on Sunday, I lost my power steering. All of a sudden the power steering got tight and on the display thing it said power steering. Not power steering gone, not you're dead, not it just said power steering. So I don't really... Anyways, when I got to Amanda's house, I shut the car off and I came back up and it was fine and it's been fine ever since, so I don't know what that was. It always happens at the worst possible spot though, doesn't it? I'm just on my way to get lottery tickets.
worked uh, night shift last night, so now she's off for five days. So what she does is she'll stay up till three, and then sleep till five, and then get up at five, and then go back to bed at around eleven, so she can switch back to a day shift. So she's already getting sort of grumpy because she's been up since five o'clock last night. Uh, yeah, so, I don't know. I have mail in my pocket. I'm going to the mailbox last night after walking Jake and then forgetting to put it in the house. Just bills. Nothing. Nothing worth even bothering with. But, uh, Yeah, so that's what I did. We went to the Humane Society, and there are some really cute cats there, but I really just don't think it's a good idea when you're living in a house of a bunch of university students. And there was broken glass all over the place in the driveway and stuff like that. And although I don't believe Amanda does rambunctious, destructive stuff like that, she doesn't clean it up either. Um, because her attitude is, well, I didn't do it. Which I get, but you live there. Do you want to live like that kind of thing? Uh, they all play this waiting game for who's going to clean it. Um, the house prices out there are like a third of what they are in my area. Uh, I have a friend who's a real estate agent, and the guy that owns his house um, paid like a hundred and nineteen thousand dollars for it. Back in 2011. So with the student rentals, and they, it takes five students at a time because it has a finished basement. It's a small bungalow, but uh, he paid 119 for it. He's probably got half of his money back already off the rooms or close to it. Properties don't really go up uh, that high out there because it's kind of a blue collar area. It's mostly a student area, too, where she is. Uh, for those of you that know St. Catharines, it's around the Penn Center. I didn't have the highest opinion of St. Catharines, actually, because my stepsister used to live there in the 80s, and um, she always lived in really bad spots. But that was because she married a, a loser, basically. Um, basically totally derailed her life. And speaking of her, I haven't seen her since uh, 2001. And I saw her out in uh, Peterborough, Ontario. And without getting into too many personal details, I saw her last week. She doesn't know who I am, uh, and it wasn't one of those things like she was she was pretending not to know me. She really didn't know who I was. She looked directly at me and no reaction and walked away. Um, I think she might have a. She was well on her way to a substance abuse problem back then, and that was kind of why I had to make the decision. Uh, she was hanging out with some really bad and dangerous people and, uh, back in the late, well, all through the 80s, really. And uh, Amanda was young, and uh, I just didn't want her growing up around that crowd, because it's the kind of crowd I grew up around. And it destroys your soul. Be around people like that. They just they just eat away at you. And uh, it wasn't an easy decision to make, but uh, it was a decision I, I had to protect who I, I was responsible for. And she had to make her own decisions. She made some bad ones. Um, the guy that she was married to was in and out of jail for dealing crack, and uh, he died, I think, in uh, 98. He was well over five. 
was living in a halfway house in near in a nearby town, uh, just outside of Peterborough, and uh, he got high with some of the people at the halfway house, and they were up on the roof screwing around, and he fell off and broke his neck. And died. Uh, I didn't find out about it till many years later. We never were really that close. We were. As we became adults, we got to, you know, to the point where we could be civil, but, and like I said, she made her decisions, and, um, I'm kind of estranged from all of them on that side of the family, uh, the, the step family, I guess you could call it. They just saw uh, I had something that they didn't, and, you know, <laughs> you know how it goes. So, oh, beautiful skies today. Not too bad. Yeah, so I don't know, this car might be on its last legs. It's got 254,000 kilometers on it. On that video I put up last night about being too old to shovel, one of my YouTube friends uh, said, Vancouver Island is calling you. And uh, he's a guy, I, I can't, it's been a long time ago since we talked, it's been a long time since we talked about it, but I, I think he was originally from Mississauga, or something like that. And, uh, I forget his YouTube username. Island car shows, maybe? Something like that. Anyways, he lives in Cowichan Bay, north of Victoria. And I was thinking about it. If I lived out there, I don't think I would buy a new car. I don't really think there's that much of a reason for it. Uh, I'd just buy an older car and sink a little bit of money into it. with these cars is if they break down you can't fix them. You know? The cars that I had when I was a teenager and, and um, in my early 20s I fixed myself. I never took them. I never took them to the mechanic shop. Of course they were uh, they were older cars then but easy to fix.
big family. I think he has five kids. And uh, he goes to this campsite in Cape Cod every summer. For, uh, I think four weeks. He takes all of his vacation. Four or five weeks. He takes almost all of his vacation uh, in the summer. And he goes there and they charge $12 a day. So it's quite a good deal. And they'll give you a... A uh, discount if you if you stay for more than a week. So it probably works out to about ten dollars a day. Um, and I I don't know the guy personally, but uh, she said that he's a he's a, a straightforward guy. He doesn't you know how some people exaggerate things. And, so apparently it's quite nice. So we might go check that out. Well, we will go check that out and maybe check out upstate New York, Vermont, Maine, all that area. I have to find a uh, better mattress for the camper, though. The one that's in there is pretty bad. It's, it's pretty soft and Julie needs a firmer mattress because she's got a bad back from all these years of being a nurse and moving heavy patients and stuff like that. And a lot of them treat nurses like they're their slaves, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sick, I'm not going to help in any way, shape, or form. So, um... So she has a pretty bad back and she needs a firm mattress. That's why that's why we stopped camping in the first place. We used to go up to the Pine area by Grand Bend on uh, Lake Huron. Which I still miss doing. Although you can buy a trailer up there in the mobile park for fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Just there are parts of the year where uh, that area gets a lot of tornadoes, or potential tornadoes, I'm told, anyways. With the winds from out west moving east across the, uh, the big lake there, massive lake. Um, but, yeah, so that's what's going on lately.